Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then hi, I'm so glad you clicked on. My Year of One is a low buy project. It's following on from last year's project for me, which was a no buy year. My Year of One is where I can buy one thing a month and it's my way of reintroducing shopping, spending and consuming back into being part of my life. But hopefully, by the quantity control aspect, stopping them from becoming the problematic behaviours that they used to be. Although I'm now trying to control the amount of stuff that I bring into my life, I still do absolutely love fashion and beauty, particularly perfume, which is what this video is about. So that is what most of my content is. It is fashion and beauty content, but within the sort of parameters of trying not to go absolutely mad not spending in a way that is damaging to me achieving my long-term life goals like buying a house for example. If that sort of content sounds good to you then please do consider hitting the subscribe button. Today's video is my 2021 perfume collection. So as well as my year of one being about controlling the amount of stuff that I can bring into my life, I will also be continuing this year with my beauty rehab behaviours that I started working on in 2018 and beauty rehab behaviours are something that I do to try and make sure that I work towards having a more manageable beauty collection and part of that is taking inventory at the start of the year. So I'm going to go through all of my perfumes, I'm just going to talk about them as if this was a normal perfume collection video but in the cutaways where I show you the perfumes I'll also list the value of them and then at the end of the video once I've finished talking about the perfumes I'm going to talk about the values and the quantities and what my plans are for trying to reduce my perfume stash and what I'm aiming to use and things so if you're not interested in that bit of the video I'll say when the actual talking about products is done and you can click off and yeah those of you who are here for the rehab part of the video can stick around. It's just to frame this perfume collection video I live in Scotland, in the UK, it's quite cold most of the time so the majority of my fragrances are orientals, that is what I tend to like. I like warm, spicy but sweet oriental fragrances it tends, in terms of the fragrance family that most of mine fall into. There are exceptions, I have a range of fragrances but most of them are orientals and they all sort of follow that same line so I feel like it's important to mention that I live in a climate that is generally cold. Even our summer kind of gets up to around the 20 degree celsius mark which is not particularly warm but when I do go travelling to warmer climates, not that I've been travelling much recently with the whole pandemic but when I do go travelling I quite often actually panic about my perfume because a lot of my perfumes I don't think would work in a in a warmer climate. I think they'd be too heady, too cloying, just too warm for a warm climate. So I feel like you're probably not going to get any good recommendations from me if you live somewhere warm. As I say, I like orientals. I do like sweet orientals. I feel like if you'd asked me like five or six years ago, I'd have said, no, I don't like sweet fragrances. Um, and I feel like I've got more and more into sweet fragrances I feel like to an extent that was true but also I think what I meant by that was that I don't tend to like sort of gourmand fragrances I've got one proper sugar bomb fragrance but I think that's about it that doesn't tend to be what I go for I also am not a fan of florals now to immediately contradict that most of my fragrances are oriental florals so I do like florals that's not technically true but I don't tend to like things that smell very floral, as in very literally floral, if that makes sense. So um, one of the reference points for that, I would say, is if any of you ever sell the Sam McKnight hair products, which he is very passionate about his garden and he used all those sort of florals to inject that sort of English garden smell into his hair products. I was very excited to try his hair products. We went to Liberty when we went to London so that I could pick them up and I think it was a texture spray that I tried and as soon as I sprayed it my friend Lindsay was like you have you look so horrified. You know I sort of physically recoiled from the scent. When I went to the Glossier showrooms in New York I think they were burning 
I want to say it was Roses by Byredo. I've just googled it so it's Byredo Burning Rose which they have in the Glossier showrooms and again I felt like physically sick when I walked into that space and could was just hit with that rose smell so I don't tend to like things that are very literally floral and um, so again if that's your bag you're probably not going to enjoy the fragrances that I have in this collection so yeah I just wanted to kind of give a little bit of background to my climate and my fragrance preferences before we get on into it but I think that's pretty much everything and let's just get on into talking scent <laughs> We may as well start with a bit of a fragrance powerhouse, which is Chanel Number no. Five. According to Fragrantica, Chanel Number no. Five is a floral aldehyde fragrance. The main accords are woody, aldehylic, white floral, fresh, powdery, yellow floral, earthy, iris, sweet, and floral. In terms of the notes of Chanel Number no. Five, so the top notes are aldehyde, dilang lang, neroli, bergamot, and peach. The middle notes are iris, jasmine, rose, lily of the valley. And then the base notes are sandalwood, vanilla, oak moss, vetiver and patchouli. Now Chanel number no. 5 is actually not a fragrance that I wear all that often because it's so iconic and so recognisable that I feel like if you turn up wearing Chanel number no. 5 at least one other person in the room is also going to be wearing it. But despite that I have two bottles of it. They are both sort of limited edition bottles in one way or another. The first bottle of Chanel number no. 5 that I have in my collection is this one which I believe was Christmas 2018 I want to say. This was when they got it out in this beautiful red bottle. But Chanel Rouge Noir is one of my favourite nail polish colours, one of my favourite lipstick colours, it's just so iconic. So when they did this Christmas collection it was all sort of themed around the Rouge Noir. I just absolutely fell in love. And fast forward to the next Christmas, Chanel then released these beautiful boxes. It just looks like a very kind of standard perfume box on the outside. But when you open this up, this is the display that you're met with. So again, really the two Chanel number no. 5s that I own are collector's pieces as opposed to owning Chanel number no. 5 for the sheer sake of Chanel number no. 5. This one has just got the standard glass bottle and what I actually plan to do at some point if I ever get through them is have this on display with the red bottle in it. So if you look closely in here you can see like the little red detailing on the bags and boxes so I feel like having the red bottle in here will just really emphasise that and bring it out and it will just be a beautiful piece to have on display. Um, I'm not displaying it at the moment because this is very much full and obviously I don't want to expose it to too much light so it's not on display at the moment but the plan is to just have it up there on display once I eventually finish the contents of the red bottle but it'll probably take me a while because as I say although I own this and I feel like it's quite a sort of pillar of a fragrance collection in a way like I can't really imagine not owning Chanel number no. five it's also not it's one that I wear very infrequently and it's one that I have to be in the mood for because I always know somebody else will be wearing it basically and it's not even it's not even necessarily being that I don't like somebody else wearing the same fragrance as me because obviously everyone's skin chemistry will react with a fragrance and it will be slightly different but it's just such a recognisable fragrance and I think sometimes when you've got one of those super recognisable fragrances it sort of speaks on your behalf before you do if that makes sense and I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that as much as I adore it and I do absolutely adore it. I particularly like, sounds like the most indulgent thing in the world, but I particularly like spraying myself with Chanel number no. 5 and getting into the shower because when the hot water like reacts to my skin I feel like it lifts up in this beautiful cloud that just is so stunning to be enveloped in. I love the fragrance, it's just not one that I wear that much, but those are my two bottles of Chanel number no. 5 to kick us off. Leading off of Chanel number no. 5, I have a very similar fragrance box of Coco Mademoiselle. So I actually asked for the number no. 5 that I just showed you for Christmas the next year, I think this was 2019. But I asked for number no. 5 and my gran actually got me 
the Coco Mademoiselle. I think she thought she was buying number five. I don't really know. I don't know how anyone could think that. I don't know if she asked for number five and the sales assistant maybe got the wrong box. But basically when I opened it on Christmas Day she was a bit like, I definitely thought I had number five. But anyway, in that same beautiful setup we've got Coco Mademoiselle. Coco Mademoiselle is actually a floral oriental which is the fragrance family that I tend to like the most. However, it's not a fragrance or I hadn't received this as a gift. I don't think it's a fragrance I would buy for myself. It's very soft, it's very romantic. It's um it's one and I suppose this is the interesting thing is as much as I love fragrance, I had never actually watched anybody talk about fragrance particularly other than I, I love Sally Hughes and she does talk about fragrance and I've watched her talk about fragrance, but as a general rule I don't watch any perfume YouTubers. I don't watch perfume collections. I'd never watched a perfume collection ahead of filming this one just to see how most people kind of set them up and what sort of things people talked about within their fragrance collections because scent is so completely subjective. It's so far beyond, you know, the way that any kind of YouTuber can show you a lipstick and regardless of what they think of it, you can tell from looking at the swatch, from looking at the pigment, from you know hearing about the finish etc you can tell whether it's for you. Whereas perfume is so completely subjective that one person's interpretation of a fragrance is so different to anybody else's and it's so imbued with personal history and for me I wouldn't buy this because I wore this when I was a teenager and it's a fragrance that I feel makes a girl out of me Again, it makes me feel young, it makes me, and, uh, like, I don't know, some people might have great memories attached to being a te teenager, but I don't, like, I was just not confident, I was, you know, was I did not enjoy being a teenager at all. It really wasn't until I kind of got to uni and got a wider world view that I sort of became more comfortable being myself. And I feel like this is just so attached to a time in my life when I felt so unsure and so like I couldn't ever speak up for myself and I felt intimidated and that is, you know, that's what I associate this with is feeling like somebody who keeps their mouth shut and it's so at odds for me with, if you look at the adverts for this with Keira Knightley and she like you know, seduces the guy and then she, she runs off in her moped or whatever and leaves him kind of thing and it's this woman who's sort of very self-contained and confident and that's just not to me what this smells like at all. Um, but it's, it's probably because I wore it when I was a teenager and ironically I, I got a bottle of Chanel number no. 5 when I was 12, I remember asking for it and I felt like when I was a teenager I wasn't self-assured enough to wear Chanel number no. 5 yet. I felt like Chanel number no. 5 was a grown-up woman's scent at that point and this became my alternative and it still in my head feels like the alternative so it's one that if I hadn't got as a gift I don't think I would have bought it and I feel like I probably need to reclaim this scent in a way and imbue it with some new memories but it's just not one that I have a whole lot of love for but I, I believe it's their best-selling fragrance so that is obvious that is me. The top notes are orange, mandarin orange, bergamot and orange blossom. The middle notes are Turkish rose, jasmine, mimosa and ylang ylang and the base notes are patchouli, white musk, vanilla, vetiver, tonka bean and opaponax. I don't know I may be pronouncing some of these things incorrectly so bear with me if I am. I'm just reading them and trying to guess as best I can. The last Chanel fragrance that I've got to show you today is one that I like the best of them all and it is the absolute dregs that I am holding on to in this bottle which is Chanel's Coco. So I don't love this in the opening but I love this once it settles on my skin. It's so beautiful. I feel like it's it's the sort of fragrance that I think most people will find a bit much and a bit headachey but I absolutely adore it. An oriental spicy fragrance. 
top notes are Bulgarian rose, coriander, peach, jasmine and mandarin orange. The middle notes are clove, rose, orange blossom, mimosa and clover. And the base notes are amber, sandalwood, tonka bean, civet, opoponix, vanilla and labdurum. Oriental spicy is what it is. It's sweet still though, it's still sweet and it's got a real powderiness to it and I adore this so much. As you can see, near enough finished it, holding on to the lash regs just because I love it so very very dearly. I've got such a large fragrance collection at the moment that I really can't justify repurchasing this when I've got other things that I still want to use up because obviously fragrance has a lifespan and you need to be careful with it but it's one that I definitely will bring back into my collection once I've streamlined it a little bit. I absolutely adore these bottles so I'm probably going to keep the bottle even once I've emptied it just to I add it to my little display up there. Other one that I've had that I've also finished and would like to repurchase at some point is Coro Mandel from the Exclusives range. I don't have anything from that range at the moment but another fragrance that I am very interested in trying from Chanel is the new Le Lyon which is inspired by the fact that Gabrielle Chanel was obsessed with her star sign being a Leo as you can probably tell from the fact I'm wearing a dress with star signs on it. I am very into astrology and um, I'm not an expert in it at all and I don't live my life around it but I do find the whole thing incredibly interesting. Having looked through the notes and things I wouldn't order fragrance online without trying it. I've not smelled it in person yet but I am very excited to try Le Lyon when I get back into a shop and I think it's probably from looking at the notes and things online I think it's probably one that I will be adding to my collection at some point. To move on to another sort of mainstream brand I'm going to talk you through what I own from Jo Malone. If I'd done this video seven years ago or so I was really into the Jo Malone hype. I had so many Jo Malone fragrances and I feel like they're a brand that I've just sort of stepped away from in the past few years. I still love their home fragrances and there are a couple that I don't have in my collection just now so I really enjoy Mountain Tonka from Jo Malone. I've never actually owned it but I've sprayed it on my skin several times and I think at some point I'll get around to buying that. It's not a massive brand for me anymore but one of the fragrances that I think even though I'm not as interested in the brand anymore as I once was that I will always have in stock is this which is the birch and black pepper. First of all this edition of it is the limited edition. I believe these came out around 2015-ish. Uh, it's saying 2018 but that's definitely not right because that's the new bottle that they're talking about on this which launched probably in 2018 but it's the same fragrance but this is the old bottle so this was part of the Rock of Ages collection with Jo Malone and this was the 90s one so it was Rock and Roll Britain I think it was supposed to be inspired by. Notes in it are cardamom, birch, black pepper and ink. I always remember that having the ink note was supposed to be like reminiscent of tattoos and things. So this is not my original bottle from that collection. I did buy I think two or three bottles from that collection when it first launched. It sold out in the UK, it was super popular but it must have just not gone down as well in America because basically every time I've been to the US since that collection launched I have found a bottle of this at the cosmetics company outlet. Even though you couldn't get it for love nor money in the UK it must have just not sold well in America at all. So I think this is the bottle that I got in 2017 when I went to Florida. So as you can see it's, it's very nearly finished but I absolutely adore this scent. It's just very clean. As with all Jo Malone clones, you know, it's very clean. The birch, the black pepper, it's simple. It's, oh, it's so beautiful though. So this is a woody, spicy fragrance apparently. Absolutely adore it. I feel like I'm never going to be somebody who has a signature scent. Um, I can't, I did put some perfumes in my project pan last year and it just really emphasised to me how much I don't like panning perfume. I like switching about my fragrances. I feel like perfume and lipstick in terms of beauty products are the two that I get the most excited about and they are the two that I don't like panning because I don't like being restricted but particularly fragrance because it's so dependent on my mood, what I want to wear each day. I don't think I would ever be somebody with a signature scent but I feel like 
if I was forced to have one, it would probably be this. If I was told I could only keep one perfume, I think it would be this one. Not because it's my absolute favourite, but because it's never not appropriate. Because it's just so beautiful, it's warm, it's got the spice in it. Because there's no floral, there's nothing clawing about it. It's just, it's clean, but spicy, but still warm, but not, not in a clawing warm way. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I had this and I was like rationing it out as you do. And then Joe Malone did their collaboration with the Huntsman. So I got another bottle of it because they brought this back and put it in the Huntsman bottles, which is what I think is the one from 2018. This is sold as a men's cologne, but I don't really believe in gender. I think anyone of any gender or non-binary person can wear anything that they want to smell like. I don't believe in gendered scents. I then got the Huntsman bottle because I thought it was limited edition but it's actually permanent so you can always get this now. Uh, Birch and Black Pepper by Jo Malone from the Huntsman collection. The bottles are really lovely in that they've so they've got beautiful burgundy stopper and then they say Huntsman across all four sides and then they've got four perfumes so or four fragrances so if you buy the four different colognes you could line them up and they would say Huntsman right across it and um, yeah I would pretend there's not part of me very very tempted to buy four bottles of this same one. But the other one that I would actually buy in this packaging would be Whiskey and Cedarwood which I have at the moment in again limited edition packaging. So this was from the Modernist collection which I believe was around 2016-2017. Whiskey and Cedarwood is one of the ones from that collection but they've now brought it in permanently to the Huntsman collection. It is an oriental woody fragrance. The notes in it are whiskey, obviously, cedar, obviously, beeswax, pimento and rose. So beautiful. Obviously I own this, I wear this but this is one that is very very nice on a man. It's warm, it's like it just makes me think of sitting by the fire you know with a whiskey and yeah lots of good times so Whiskey and Cedarwood by Jo Malone. I bought the entire Modernist collection so the other one that I have that I really really enjoy is Tobacco and Mandarin. It's an aromatic fruity fragrance. The notes in it are Mandarin Orange, Tobacco, Sage and Beeswax. For obvious reasons it's a lovely one around Christmas but it's not a super festive scent. You could wear this all year round. I think the, the fact it's got the Mandarin in it means although it's a tobacco -y fragrance and it is warm you could just wear this in summer as well. It's not one that's like I think if you're somebody who doesn't like a sort of super light citrus fragrance or like one of those sort of coconut tropical fragrances that people often bring out in summer, this is quite a nice one to wear when the weather is a bit warmer so you don't want something super cloying and heady but you still want to smell like yourself as opposed to this tropical person that you're not the rest of the year. So yeah, Tobacco and Mandarin by Jo Malone. And then the last two that I've got from this collection, well actually there's one that I, I still have the bottle of because I kept I kept it so that I could, once these are done again, display them. I'll put in a cutaway of the five bottles lined up to show you what they would all look like. I think they'd look lovely on a shelf with like a sort of antique aged beat up leather bound book of some sort and you know maybe like a nice candle half a vision. So when I finish these I definitely will be keeping the bottles but the other two fragrances that I have not finished are the two that I only bought because they were part of the collection. So these are two that I will use up. I don't hate them but I just I wouldn't have picked them had they not been part of that collection. The first one is Blue Hyacinth, a straight up floral fragrance. It's never really my cup of tea as I've said. However if you look at the main accords it's a fresh spicy, then it's floral, then it's green, aromatic, rose, earthy, woody and if you look at the notes it's Blue Hyacinth, Geranium and Vetiver. So I feel like it's the Vetiver that makes this one that I can actually get along with. I don't love it, I definitely wouldn't repurchase it, but it's quite green, it's not too floral. It's got that spice, it's got that sort of sharp freshness. 
when I wear this I tend to mix it with something same as I also would mix this which is the other one from that collection so this is Garden Lilies so Garden Lilies is a floral green fragrance the notes in it are water lily green notes vanilla ylang ylang and white musk of the two I probably prefer this one but I will use them up and you know there's a time and a place for them it's just that the mood strikes me a little bit less often than it strikes me to wear the others. I mix these when I wear them so I never really wear them just as they are. I used to mix them with Jo Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt which I have finished, it's out of my collection and what I mix them with in the meantime is this from Clean Reserve, Suede Oud. The main accords in it are woody, amber, musky, leather, fresh, spicy, warm, spicy, smoky, oud, sweet and aromatic. It is a woody floral musk fragrance. The top notes in it are cypress, incense, birch and pimento. The middle notes are agar woods, which is oud, balsam fir, cactus, night blooming jasmine, honeysuckle and white magnolia. And the base notes are suede, musk, praline, amber, patchouli and olibanum. And this is just so, that's so many notes when they come together. This just smells so, it smells like for that for having that amount of notes in it this is such a fresh unfussy smelling fragrance is so beautiful again perfect for summer if you're not somebody who wants those sort of tropical super fruity fragrances that tend to be you know touted out in summer because it's just not overwhelming it's not clawing it's not even that warm although it's got the oud in it it's like it's probably still on the warmer side but it's not a warm cloying fragrance. This is beautiful on its own and three of these little minis they were a gift with purchase and I've finished up two of them and I'm quite sad that I'm on to the last one. It's one that I could definitely see myself bringing a full size of into my collection at some point because it's beautiful on its own but it's also really really lovely if you do have those like more floral sort of scents that you do maybe just want to ground a little bit more in that sort of wood and spice. Speaking of sort of clean uncomplicated scents the next one that I'm going to talk about is from Derek Lamb the 10 Crosby Street range. This is Silent Street. This isn't a fragrance regret for me. I do like it. However basically what happened was we went to New York in February 2016 and this whole range had like just launched, it was front and centre at Sephora, it was a really beautiful piece of marketing so if there was I think 10 fragrances in the launch to start with and each fragrance had its own film and it was all about each one captured a moment and I just fell in love with the sort of whole setup, I was so so into it. Basically we went to Sephora pretty much every night and I tried on a different one trying to figure out which one I liked the most on my skin and this was one of the last ones that I tried and I decided to get this one and I think actually what I liked the most was not so much this on my skin but on my coat which had absorbed all of the different ones I think I just liked the cocktail of um it was like the black one whatever the black one was called I really liked that one this one and want to say like the red coloured one. I can't remember what they all wear now. I need to go back and look at them. So I do like this but I feel like what I thought I was buying was not actually this as it is on its own. But I do like it. What this is on its own is a floral woody musk fragrance and the notes in it are white musk and floral notes. It's 175 mils and I believe they've now discontinued this size so I think it only comes in a 50 mil now um, which is quite annoying because my whole sort of plan was to buy another one of these every single time I went and then have a collection but because they've discontinued this size if I get the other ones they won't look like a collection next to each other if that makes sense. I remember it being expensive and I feel like it's too expensive for what it is. It's such a simple fragrance. But I do like it, I don't regret it, I'm not going to declutter it, I will use it up in time but yeah it's very much a white floral musk fragrance. I don't think you need to pay the price that I did for this for that type of fragrance. I'm going to go into my Penhaligon's fragrances. I have three of these and these are like some of the crown jewels of my fragrance collection. I would like several more from this range. 
um, and the range that all three of mine are from is the Penhaligon's Portraits range. The Portraits range is that basically every perfume is a personality within the sort of soap opera that they're running. So you've got this key family which is Lord George and his wife Lady Blanche and they've got I think two children, Rose and I think they've got, um, I can't remember his name but there's one of the perfumes is called Much Ado About the Duke which is I believe their male child um, and then all the other fragrances are like somebody's mistress or somebody's cousin or the visiting so-and-so or whatever and they all interweave into this sort of ridiculous story which I just adore so so much. So the first perfume I've got from the Penhaligon's Portraits line to talk about is The Revenge of Lady Blanche. So Lady Blanche is the wife of Lord George. So these are the boxes for these fragrances which are absolutely beautiful. Um, so as you can see you get like the human figure there uh, that is represented by the fragrance um, but each of them is also represented by an animal. So in Lady Blanche's case she is a leopard and it says on the back The Revenge of Lady Blanche. It was a murder but hardly a crime. She is a darling of London society and one of the most influential ladies in Britain. Her aloof beauty, mysterious past and blazing passions are scrutinised by all from shop girls to royalty. She would do anything to climb the social ladder still further. Her latest scheme is to poison her husband Lord George, inheriting his wealth and burying his secrets forever. Her fragrance reflects her very essence, a floral green narcotic, charmingly dangerous. And this is what she looks like. So these bottles are just so beautiful. They are so heavy. They are so weighty. If Lady Blanche had her own perfume to hand, she wouldn't need to bother with poison. She could just throw it at Lord George and she'd probably take him out and be able to say it was an accident. As you can probably tell, the marketing and the packaging and the story of these really, really gets me. But these are genuinely three of my favourite fragrances within my collection. As much as I love the marketing and the presentation of them, the actual fragrances are stunning. And they're three very different from each other fragrances, which I also quite like because I feel like sometimes I do get into a bit of a habit and I buy things that are variations on a theme. I feel like the three from Penhaligans that I have are three very different fragrances, very different moods. According to Fragrantica, this is a floral fragrance for women and the notes are hyacinth, narcissus and iris flowers. It says the main accords are green, floral, iris, yellow floral, fresh, spicy, earthy, powdery, violet and rose. So this is another one of my very sort of few and far between floral fragrances but it's a very green sharp floral it's not it's not like a romantic floral at all as you would expect from a, a perfume that is about murder. I feel like this is the sort of fragrance that I wear this when I need to have my stuff together like if I had a business meeting or if I was going to court if I ever did murder anybody and I wanted to get off with it it's a very appropriate fragrance for how it's it's marketed. It's a fragrance that feels it feels like it's a fragrance for a woman who has got her together. Like it's very grown up, but not in a way that feels uh, sort of like there's a barrier and you know you need to be a certain age. It's 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 a sort of very grown up, sophisticated elegant like somebody who's very self-assured somebody who's very confident like I feel like when I wear this I want to channel just like poise and elegance and like being the sort of person who never loses their temper but like has really cutting sarcastic remarks to keep everybody in line does that make any sense I feel like that's the personality that I've assigned to this fragrance. I don't know if it's just an illusion with these bottles but I have I've worn all three of these so many times and I feel like they always look full. Um, I don't, the bottles do get smaller towards the bottom so it probably does take you ages to actually move away from the top and then it'll go more quickly as you get down because I have used them a lot but they just never, they never look used which I'm not complaining about in the slightest for the price of them 
They are some of my most expensive fragrances, um, but they are absolutely, yeah, they are icons in my collection. They're crowning jewels in my collection and I love them very, very much. On the other side of Lord George, so that was his wife who's going to murder him, his mistress. So this is clandestine Clara. She's a peacock. And it says in the back of her box, you can tell a good workman by his tools. Lord George's mistress is a mischievous and modern free spirit. She speaks her mind and conducts scandalous love affairs. She smokes and even has a job. We pray she does not embody a broader movement for women. Her perfume is as unconventional as she is, a spicy, woody fragrance. Let's just take a moment to look at the cutaways of the bottle because the bottle is so beautiful. I absolutely love it. I love peacocks in general. I'm very, I've noticed recently I'm very attracted to bird motifs as a design. Um, it's not something I've ever been conscious about, but I've sort of realised I've got lots of things with birds on them that I've never, I've never consciously sat down and been like, I want to get a print with a bird on it, but several things that I want to have birds on them. But my favourite colour it's green and peacocks in particular have those beautiful bluey greens that I'm super attracted to. So it says clandestine clara is a woody spicy fragrance for women. The notes are amber, rum, vanilla, woody notes, cinnamon and patchouli. And the main accords are woody, amber, vanilla, warm, spicy, rum, cinnamon, patchouli, powdery, balsamic and sweet. Although sweet's at the bottom, I would say it's a very sweet fragrance. It's a fragrance I wear to bed quite a lot. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. It's exquisite. If I had to have a signature scent that was more like, here is my personality in a fragrance, it would be this one. But it's also, it's, it's something I guard, is this fragrance. I don't wear it around people that I don't know. The last of the Penhaligans that I've got, which is actually the first one that I ever bought, the blazing Mr. Sam, an American abroad in London to be precise, who speaks freely, lives fast and talks loud. But his company is captivating and his conversation is a delight. Nevertheless, Countess Dorothea is unamused. That big grin is intrusive, that large chin unseemingly, those beautiful eyes danger, and those lavish gifts vulgar. Well, the ones for her, perhaps not. Mr. Sam's main accords are warm, spicy, woody, tobacco, vanilla, cinnamon, aromatic, fresh, spicy, sweet and patchouli. Top notes are cardamom and cinnamon, the middle notes are saffron, cumin and black pepper, and the base notes are vanilla, tobacco, cedar and patchouli. Again, could do a serious, I mean these are like so pointy, these horn things, like could do a serious damage with these. Oh I love this so much. I feel like this is very similar to the Jo Malone Birch and Black Pepper that I was saying is never not appropriate but it's just got, ugh, it's less simple, it's got a bit more going on but it's still fresh but spicy and warm and oh, it's so good. This is why I don't do perfume content because all I want to be like is like it's so good or I don't really identify with this fragrance so I don't wear it that much. That th Those are my two modes of fragrance. Moving on from Penhaligans, I will talk about my Maison Margiela fragrances. First of all I have Jazz Club which in terms of my inventory I have both a sample of to count in and a full size of. This is advertised as a fragrance for men but again I just wear what I want to wear. This is a leather fragrance for men. The top notes are pink pepper, neroli and lemon. The middle notes are rum, clary sage and java vertiver oil. The base notes are tobacco leaf, vanilla bean and styrax. And then the main accords are tobacco, rum, sweet, vanilla, woody, soft spicy, aromatic, amber, warm spicy and powdery. Oh gosh so I love this fragrance so much. Again, it's very sort of, ugh, it's just really sexy in a non-try hard kind of way. Oh, it's lovely. I feel like this is the sort of fragrance I would wear if I was going on a date with someone, like very jazz club, very appropriately named as most of the fragrances in this line are. I feel like this is what I wear if I want to feel like I'm at a modern jazz club but I've got another fragrance that sort of transports me into what I think is very sort of evocative of a genuine 1920s jazz club if that makes sense um but this is like a sort of more refined modern take on a jazz club 
it's not a particularly vintage scent despite the name to me having very vintage connotations if that makes sense at all. The other Margiela fragrance that I own is By The Fireplace. It says this one is a male and female fragrance and this is just so good. Again, I feel like I only have the two Margiela fragrances but they are both just exquisite. I love them both and now that they're in my collection I can't imagine them ever not being in my collection. So in terms of the notes in By The Fireplace, it says this is a woody fragrance. The top notes are cloves, pink pepper, orange blossom. The middle notes are chestnut, guayac wood, probably butchering that, sorry, uh, juniper, and then base notes are vanilla, peru balsam, and cashmere. It says the main accords are woody, vanilla, balsamic, amber, warm, spicy, powdery, nutty, and musky. The accords are just perfect. It's such a beautiful fragrance, it's really got, you know, so it says the fragrance description is burning wood and chestnuts and it's definitely got that vanilla sweetness through it but it is very chestnutty so I feel like it's very very appropriate at Christmas but it's also not so far on that Christmas line that it's inappropriate at other times of year and this is also just a brilliant layering fragrance. I haven't found any fragrance in my collection that this doesn't layer with well weirdly enough so I wear this quite a lot with Jazz Club I wear the two together but I also saw somebody on my Instagram mixing this with Mon Guerlain um, which I've also done and that's again beautiful combination and just not two that I would have put together at all but literally no matter what you put this with it just works because I mean I suppose maybe it's because I've got a lot of warm ambery, patchouli, spicy sort of fragrances that are going to lend themselves well to like vanilla and smoke and chestnuts but it just works with everything and there's something like there's something so edible about it probably the chestnut note but in that nutty chestnut note kind of way not in a marshmallow wave like you know sickly sweet sugary way um you know it's it's not like something like candy like it's edible in a sort of nutty beautiful way so i said that jazz club from margiela to me is like a modern jazz club the fragrance that i've got that really puts me in mind of a sort of 1920s vintage jazz club and that's not how they market this at all this is this is very much again my interpretation of this is elizabeth and james amethyst which i believe is really sadly discontinued. So it says the main accords are tobacco, white floral, sweet, woody, fruity and warm spicy. It says it's a spicy scent with honeysuckle, tobacco and cedar. It's an oriental floral fragrance and the notes in it are tobacco, honeysuckle, cedar and spices. And I feel like for me it's like the tobacco in this that mixes with those florals and it smells exactly what I kind of imagine like a club in like the 1920s would have smelled like when people were in it and they were smoking and you know there's almost like I'm sure nobody would thank me for this but I feel like there's almost like a note of like sweat and hot bodies in here but I don't know if that's just because I am transposing what I think of when I think of this onto the fragrance I don't know if it's actually there or not it's not unpleasant though it's not um it's not like B.O. it just something quite sort of sharp on the edge of it. It's oh I love this so so much. I have nearly finished it. I'm gonna be so so sad when this is gone. To me this smells like a woman in the 1920s who is wearing you know some kind of very traditional floral 1920s vintage scent who's gone into a jazz club and you know people are smoking and drinks are being poured and spilled there's that sort of sticky stickiness to it that's almost like you know when a sugary cocktail is spilled on a wooden surface and it gets that sort of sticky way and yeah it just this fragrance really conjures up a whole scenario for me you know and there's too many people and it's hot and it's overcrowded but everyone's in a good mood that is what this fragrance is to me so whether that has anything to do with the notes in it or whether that is just me making a story around it, I don't actually know. Chicken and the egg, which came first, the scent or the story. Um, but I do absolutely love this. 
I did also have the Nirvana bourbon at one point which had finished and I missed that a lot. I thought that was a beautiful fragrance as well. The last one that I've got is Nirvana Black. So as you can tell I got the three of them were in one of those little discovery sets in Sephora. So it says Nirvana Black is a woody fragrance. Notes in it are sandalwood, vanilla and violet and the cores are woody, powdery, vanilla, violet, warm, spicy and balsamic. Again, I really really like this one. If I could only keep one of them, I would definitely keep Amethyst. I feel like quite attached to Amethyst but I do really really like this one. Again, I have got like one or two uses left in this little roller ball and I'm going to be very sad when it's done. I don't think I'd rush to repurchase it the way that I would the Amethyst one, but I am going to be sad when it's finished. The next perfume that I'm going to talk about is from Gucci and I am full disclosure, I got this because I wanted this box. So these were the boxes that Gucci did for Christmas 2020, Christmas just gone there, um, which have these beautiful moon and stars. As I said, I love astrology anything that kind of involves the moon or a constellation as a design I'm very much attracted to. Um, so I really really wanted one of these boxes and of the fragrances that were in the boxes this was one that I liked the most. It's probably not one I would have bought, well it's definitely not one I would have got if it hadn't been in this box. I used points to pay for it so I didn't actually spend money on this technically so you know kind of is what it is. I will use it up, I won't repurchase it and it is Gucci Guilty. So in terms of my inventory, I do just want to say, I'll explain at the end, but I am counting perfumes as one category and then perfume adjacent products that I own, such as body washes or body lotions. There's not a whole load of them, um, but this is one of them, is the Gucci Guilty body lotion. I'm counting it within my perfume inventory because they are products that I have to use in conjunction with perfumes. They are not body lotions as normal body lotions from my skincare inventory, if that hopefully makes sense to you guys. Um, but yes, this is the Gucci Guilty. Now this is the Eau de Toilette. Most of the fragrances I think I've shown you so far are the Eau de Parfums, unless it's been the likes of like the Jo Malone that are all clones. Um, I tend to go for actual Eau de Parfum over toilets but basically I wanted the box, the box was the main thing and so many of them were super super battered so I basically picked the best box which was a box that had an eau de toilet in it as opposed to the eau de parfum um, and I much prefer the eau de parfum bottle of this, I don't think this is a particularly nice bottle, I think it's quite cheap looking actually, I don't know, a bit flashy and just really not my taste as a bottle. But in terms of the fragrance, it is an oriental floral fragrance, as most of them are. The top notes are pink pepper, mandarin orange and bergamot, the middle notes are lilac, peach, geranium, jasmine and black currants, and the base notes are patchouli, amber, white musk and vanilla. And the main accords in this are Floral, soft, spicy, fruity, sweet, patchouli, fresh, citrus, amber, fresh, spicy and warm, spicy. I feel like this is very much a sort of like night out if I was going to a club or something. I feel like this is what I would wear. Um, I do like it, I just don't love the packaging which is partly why I'm a bit like, oh, this would get earmarked to get used up and get moved out if I was doing that. And talk about that at the end of the video. I do like it, I'll use it up, I just won't repurchase it. The next fragrance I'm going to talk about is by Timothy Hahn and it is the She Came To Stay. So similar to Penhaligans, I love the concept of these fragrances. So the fragrances in this line are all named after books and they're all inspired by books. So this is by, this is inspired by She Came To Stay by Simone de Beauvoir. So it says in the back, inspired by Simone de Beauvoir's 1943 existential novel of the same name, She Came To Stay is a unisex perfume that echoes the evolving nature of our sense of self when faced with a world on the edge of change. And then this is how it sits on the inside of the box and then it says here just underneath the perfume bottle, fragrance expresses our attitude and sense of self where words and dress fail. So I really, I love this brand, I love the presentation, I love the concepts. In terms of this particular perfume, it says She Came To Stay by Timothy Han is an aromatic fougere. 
I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that so do excuse me. The top notes are lemon, geranium and basil, the middle notes are clove and nutmeg and the base notes are vetiver, patchouli, cedar, oak moss and labdanum. It says the main accords are aromatic, woody, fresh spicy, warm spicy, earthy, citrus, patchouli, herbal, green and mossy. My friend Kim describes this as Christmas in a bottle because I'll know the top notes lemon I feel like it comes across as more of an orangey fragrance in terms of the citrus because it's so warmed by the clove and the nutmeg. It's super lovely. I really, really like this. There's something verging on quite sticky about it. If you're somebody who doesn't like a cloying, sticky fragrance, this is definitely not for you. But I do very, very much like it. So that is She Came to Stay by Timothy Han. Another iconic fragrance in my collection is Alien by Thierry Mugler and this is an oriental woody fragrance. The main accords in it are white floral, amber and woody and the notes in it are jasmine, woodsy notes and amber. So quite a simple fragrance but one that really packs a punch. This is one of those fragrances that is so recognisable. In like normal times when we're not in a pandemic and I commute to work there is a woman that wears this that gets on the same train as me in the mornings and like you can smell it the whole carriage wide. It's such a powerhouse of a scent. I absolutely love this smell but it's kind of similar to Chanel number no. 5 in that it's so recognisable that I'm a bit like oh I don't like the idea of people smelling me and being able to identify my smell but I do think it's a beautiful scent like a really lovely one for like a date night or you know, a night out, something, I like to me I don't think I'd wear this to work. It's, uh, it's not a work fragrance for me. Like for me it's a fragrance for having fun in. I do absolutely love this. I am so nearly finished this bottle. I've got like absolute rebel left at the bottom so I think I'm only getting one or two nights out wearing this once we have nights out again. Definitely will repurchase, not immediately when I finish it because I've got so many other perfumes to get through as you guys can see but it is one that I probably will bring back into my stash once I finish this bottle. So I've got a couple from Guerlain to talk about in terms of going through them a brand at a time and then I've got all my sort of odds and sods at the end so we are on to the home stretch of the collection. Thank you for sticking with me this long if you have done. So just quickly to talk about perfume adjacent products again um, that will be in my inventory. I've got the Mon Guerlain Shower Gel and the Mon Guerlain Body Lotion. I really enjoy having both of these. I probably shouldn't be buying these shower gels because I'm far too precious about using them up and I only like using them when I'm also going to use the body lotion and the perfume. I feel like I need to try and make an effort to use these because I've had them a little bit too long now. This could be my, my summer fragrance I think for this year. Try to finish them. I don't get on very well when I try and commit to a fragrance so we'll see if that happens or not. But in terms of perfumes to complement the fact I do own the shower gel and the body lotion, I do also own Mon Guerlain. So this was a little sort of value pack. I think this was Christmas 2018 and in the box there was a 100ml of the perfume and also a 30ml and if you got that I think you only paid the equivalent of the 100ml and then the 30ml was essentially free. Mon Guerlain as a fragrance is such a people pleaser. I feel like I don't know anyone who dislikes Mon Guerlain. My gran wore it non-stop for absolutely ages for a while and that put me off but it was just familiarity, breeding contempt. I cannot commit to a fragrance consistently if I smell something for too many days in a row I get sick of it whereas my grand's very much somebody who can buy a bottle of perfume and use it till it's finished despite you know no matter where she's going no matter what the weather's doing no matter what she's wearing she can wear the same perfume and I just can't I can't stand that I don't see why anyone would restrict themselves in such a fashion but anyway an oriental woody fragrance the top notes are lavender and bergamot, the middle notes are iris, jasmine and rose and the base notes are Tahitian vanilla, coumarin, don't know what that is, Australian sandalwood, benzoin, licorice and patchouli. And then the main accords are vanilla, woody, lavender, aromatic, 
powdery, balsamic, sweet, warm, spicy, fresh, spicy and iris. And I wouldn't have thought on paper with the amount of floral notes that there are in this that I would have liked it, but I do like it. It's very much at the sort of softer, more traditionally feminine end of my collection. You know, I feel like I've got those things that are, as I say, there's no such thing as like gendered fragrances, but there are perfumes that I have that are sort of big blousey orientals, like Chanel Coco, for example, that are very feminine, but in a very punchy kind of loud mouth feminine way, if that makes sense. Whereas I feel like this is very feminine in a sort of very romantic, soft kind of way. But although it's like soft and romantic, it doesn't make me feel like it's somebody who's shy and retiring the way that Coco Mademoiselle makes me feel. And this is also so beautiful when mixed with By the Fireplace by Margiela, which was, I think I said, it was a recommendation from somebody on Instagram. I can't remember who it was, but I remember being like, oh, would not have put those two together put those two together and they are so beautiful together. So that is Mon Guerlain by Guerlain. The one time that I have done a blind buy on a perfume was this one from Guerlain and it's Vol de Nuit and this is the, this is actually the Eau de Toilette. So I've got two Guerlain Eau de Toilettes and then the Mon Guerlain's are Eau de Parfums and the other Guerlain I've got is an Eau de Parfum. But this is one of the Eau de Toilettes, it's the Vol de Nuit and this is, ugh, it is lovely. To me this is very old woman -y because I think my grandma, my great grandmother wore this. She died years ago so I have like since I have become a grown up enough to have been able to go in and look at a bottle of perfume and read it and identify it. I've not been able to do that so I've got no confirmation that this is what she wore but this smells exactly like what she wore so I'm like 99.999% sure that this was her fragrance. It's doing that thing where now because I associate it so much with her and because she was obviously an elderly woman from when I was born, this to me smells like an elderly woman's perfume. Which is interesting because the reason that I bought this was because Catherine Hepburn wore this fragrance. I love Catherine Hepburn, I think she's so cool, I think she was so ahead of her time in the way that she presented herself. It's so funny because this is just not what I expected her to smell like on first sort of initial reaction and then I thought this is like a prime example of I associate this fragrance with a particular person which I didn't realise obviously when I blind bought it to then try and associate it with the sort of spirit that I identify as belonging to another person in terms of obviously I don't know Catherine Hepburn so I don't know what she was like but I only know what I can know from reading about her or you know looking at pictures and looking at her style and reading quotes from her and watching her films and things and trying to merge those two particularly because so there's painting going on in the next room now so I'm really sorry if you can hear background noise from that but we are on the home stretch so let's just try and get through these last ones and I'm hoping the camera is not picking up that noise um, but yeah so I get completely interrupted there but what I was talking about was the was the fact that Catherine Hepburn wore this fragrance so it's marrying up what I sort of associate with Catherine Hepburn versus what I associate with my grandmother which is obviously like an elderly old woman who was sort of at the end of her life for most of the time that I knew that she was alive um, you know kind of not completely relying on other people you know she lived independently until the sort of very last few years of her life but it, it you know for me as a, as a young child seeing my grandmother and trying to marry that up with what I think of when I think about Catherine Hepburn is just quite an interesting <laughs> exercise and um, so I feel like I'm going to go on a bit of a journey with this perfume basically I feel like a little bit like Chanel Coco Mademoiselle I need to sort of redefine it and reclaim it for what it means to me now to smell like this but in terms of the notes of it and I do like it although I think it's a bit old womany because of the associations that I have with it I'm not against that um 
I'm not against that at all. The main accords of this are powdery, iris, green, earthy, woody, citrus, aromatic, mossy, violet and warm spicy and it's a woody fragrance and the top notes are narcissus, bergamot, orange blossom, lemon, orange and mandarin orange. The middle notes are iris, narcissus, aldehydes, vanilla, violet, Indonesian carnation, rose and jasmine and then the base notes are oak moss, orris root, sandalwood, spices and musk. I feel like this is a very green fragrance, um, like right kind of punchy from the get-go and I do like it, it's not that I don't like it but it's just, I sort of had a had an idea of what I thought this was going to be in my head because of the Catherine Hepburn association and to then open it and be like I smell my grandmother um, you know and it really was one of those sort of Proustian rush moments of going oh I know this smell and I associate it with this person so very clearly you know it's, it's one that I feel like I am um, I need to reclaim and redefine so that is Vol de Nuit by Guerlain to me, a fragrance that, that is at the complete opposite end of the spectrum, and um, this is the other eau de toilette that I own from Guerlain, is Insolence. To me, this is a fragrance for a super young girl. And this is one of these situations that I think is such an example of how subjective fragrance is, is that when I was watching other people's fragrance collection videos to try and prep for doing this one, somebody had this fragrance and they said, this is really old woman-y. And to me this is not old womeny. To me this is a sugar bomb. It's the only fragrance of its type in my collection. Officially this is a floral fruity fragrance. The notes in it are violet, iris, red berries and orange blossom and the main accords are violet, powdery, iris, fruity, fresh, floral, sweet and woody. To me this smells so young. This smells like sugar and fizz and like like it smells like parma violets mainly, it's that violet note that really just hits me but it's like parma violets if they were the texture of fizzy cola bottles, does that, if that makes any sense at all. This is a very unique scent in my collection, it's one I very much have to be in the mood to wear but it's one that makes me feel really young and really sort of, you know, I think the name insolence I think is um quite an interesting one because I feel like at first the notes that I would associate with somebody being insolent would be really defiant, almost obnoxious, headache inducing kind of notes. I feel like almost, I feel like I keep going back to it but again Chanel Coco would be a fragrance I think I would define as being like insolent. It's that kind of like I don't care kind of what you think of me type of fragrance and then I thought this is actually that. It is a fragrance for someone who doesn't care what other people think but in a very sort of young your opinion is irrelevant to me kind of way. I feel like this is a fragrance for like somebody who has no care for the rules, who is just out to have fun, who you know consequences of actions seem far off and distant and do not concern this person. Like it is insolent but in a very young, fizzy, fun kind of way to me and I think that's what's so interesting about fragrance so I, I have to be in a very specific mood to want to smell like this because I feel like it makes me smell so young but then somebody else who has this fragrance, I don't know if they picked it themselves or if they got gifted it or whatever but they think it smells like an old woman so it's, it's obviously such a completely subjective business, it, not only in terms of whether you like a fragrance or you like the way that the notes come together but just past what, what you like about it, what it makes you think of, you know, what you associate with those notes. To me this is young sugar bomb, no responsibilities, out for a night of fun kind of fragrance and I really really like it for when that comes up. The last Guerlain fragrance that I have is one of my absolute favourites and again completely unique in my collection, completely different, is Lure Blue. Again another one of those vintage ones, so Vol de Nuit I think is 1933. I think Chanel number no. 5, it was definitely around in the 1920s, I'm not sure when it was actually, when was Chanel, Chanel number no. 5 made? Let's just, let's just google that. Okay so Chanel number no. 5 was made in 1921, 
this was created in 1912 so this is like the most sort of vintage of all of my scents. So this is an oriental floral but it's completely different to anything else that I own. The top notes in this are anise, neroli, coriander, bergamot and lemon. The middle notes are heliotrope, carnation, violet, cloves, neroli, ylang-ylang, bulgarian rose, jasmine, orchid and tuberose. And the base notes are iris, vanilla, benzoin, sandalwood, tonka bean, musk and vetiver. And it says the accords in this are powdery, floral, vanilla, warm, spicy, violet, woody, aromatic, iris, soft, spicy and sweet. John Lewis actually had a really good description of this. Wait till I bring it up. The perfume both suggests and imposes the memory of she who wears it. She is an elegant, tender woman of secret sensuality. An armful of suave and delicate flowers enveloped in a breath of powder takes wing towards oriental notes. Floral, aromatic and very romantic, Lure Blue can be qualified as true masterpiece, a monument in the history of perfumery. Endearing, unsettling, captivating, the top notes of the fragrance sweeps you into the freshness of bergamot and the audacity of an aniseed note. The heart's carnation in an oily accord intoxicates with a little spice, a little freshness and a lot of sensuality. Most troubling is the powdery oriental dry down that gives Lure Blue its suave fragrance in the powdery notes of iris and violet and the gourmand notes of vanilla, vanilla benzoin and tonka bean. The perfume, enveloped in velvety warmth, takes on a texture so soft and captivating it's like a silk veil on a woman's bare skin. It really is in terms of like the way fragrances are described, that is so perfect. Velvety, soft and romantic, a fragrance of bluish dusk in anticipation of night before the first stars appear. So it's like, it's all inspired by the sort of twilight hours in between the sun setting and it becoming night and it's so beautiful but it's just so different to anything else that I own. It is sensual but it's sensual in a very romantic way. It's not, it doesn't come across, see as much as there's loads of floral notes in there. The spice really comes across, it's like velvet and spice and silk and it's kind of like a skin scent but it's not because I don't tend to be that impressed by a skin scent but it does just sort of meld with you and it becomes one and it's it's not attention seeking but it's there it's oh it's so beautiful and it's so hard to describe it's completely different to anything else I own when I got this I was between I wanted to smell this and I wanted to smell Mitsuko which I also would like to own at some point by Guerlain but Mitsuko is it was the first Shepra arguably I think Koti actually had brought out one technically before then but I feel like it's the first sort of high-end well-known Shepra but I feel like I have other fragrances that tick the same box as when I would wear Mitsuko so I decided I wouldn't get that because I would try and finish up some of them particularly having two bottles of Chanel number no. five on the, on the go at the moment um but this is just so different to everything else I absolutely love it it's yeah it's soft it's powdery it merges into your skin in a way that other none of my other perfumes kind of do it's so understated but it's still there it's elegant it's got a spice it's got a sensuality but not in a sexy way it's not a sexy fragrance at all it's more like a romantic fragrance but it's also not it's not romantic in that sort of floral romance kind of way it's beautiful it's such a stunning fragrance one that i am so happy to own and um, one that i love a lot so that is guerlain uh, lure bleu i think i said that was the last guerlain thing i had to say to talk about but i actually have one more thing which is this is by guerlain obviously and it's louis i think is how you pronounce it what this is is like a sparkly Oh, it smells so good. It's got the fragrance through it, but it's all it's like a body powder basically that puffs out um, and it's got a little bit of gold glitter through it. So that is that is absolutely beautiful, stunning dressing table product, obviously. I don't own the actual perfume, but I would quite like to. They discontinued it for a while and they just quite recently brought it back. And yeah, it's one that I think I would quite like to own because I think this is just such a beautiful scent. Um, and I do like layering accessory products with the matching uh, scent products so 
yes, I feel like a bottle of Guerlain Louis could be in my future to go with this. The last full size fragrance that I've got is actually a solid one. It's my only solid fragrance from Davines. It's their Oi Evocative Scent. I did Google this because I don't know how to describe this. It's it's basically the scent of Davines's Oi products if you've used their shampoo and conditioner. I really only use this when I'm going to the hairdresser so I got it from my hairdresser who uses Davines products and the salon smells like this because they use the product so I feel like I use this when I'm going to the hairdresser and I just want to feel like I'm having that fully like sort of spa experience you know all senses and I feel like whenever I smell it I just you know I'm transported to sitting in the hairdresser's chair and feeling calm and feeling like I'm taking some time for myself which I have not been able to do because of lockdown recently so it's, it's nice to open it every so often and give it a bit of a whiff and you know travel in my head to my hairdresser so that is the Davines Oi solid perfume I was going to say solid soap that is all of the sort of full size or like deluxe samples that I own I do have some more that I want to talk about because they're going to be in my perfume inventory in terms of uh, that but if you want to check out now that is the main body of my fragrance collection so thank you very much for watching and if you're sticking with me uh, the samples that I have got are Louis Vuitton Nuit de Fée which is absolutely stunning I love this fragrance so I got this when I went to Edinburgh last year and I was trying on um, a handbag in the store and I'd seen that this was releasing and they didn't have any big testers so she just gave me like a little sample to take away which was lovely. Main accords in this are amber, smoky, leather, oud, fresh, spicy, warm, spicy, balsamic, animalac and musky. It's an oriental woody fragrance and the notes are leather, oud, incense, olibanum and musk. This is so beautiful. It smells like bonfires but in a really good way. Definitely buy a full size of this at some point. Um, very expensive to buy a full size of I imagine but definitely one that I Think is really beautiful, really sexy, just very up my street. Another one that is very very similar is from the Sir Trudeau, the candle, if you can see I've got the Ernesto candle back there um, from the same brand and this was a little perfume sample that actually came with the candle. So this is the fragrance Mortel and the main accords in it are amber, fresh spicy, woody, warm spicy and balsamic. It is an oriental spicy fragrance. The top notes in it are black pepper, nutmeg and pimento. The middle notes are olibanum, woody notes and resins. And the base notes are labdanum, myrrh, benzoin and cedar. This smells like a burning candle, but like the burning, like the smell of the smoke after you've blown out the candle. If I was only picking one, I would pick the Louis Vuitton because I do feel they're very much related fragrances. And I feel like the Louis Vuitton's just got that little bit more going on in it but they are both beautiful. So that is a uh, Mortel by Sir Trudeau. Again, probably butchering the pronunciation of that. From Zara of all places, I've got three perfume samples. So this is from their Vibrant Leather Capsule Collection. I've got Vibrant Leather Metal, Warm Spice Blended with Precious Woods to Achieve a Universal Scent Addiction. Vibrant Leather Platinum, which is a perfect harmony between Ambery, Woodsy and Simply Iconic. The trail is beautified by an addictive accord with smoky guac wood. And then lastly, there is Vibrant Leather Warm, which is ambre seeds open the fragrance naturally with a metallic musky scent, whilst Iris, as a symbol of new manhood, is wrapped in an appealing woody accord. Manhood. Well, generally, if a fragrance is a bit masculine, I tend to like it. So, yeah, I've never tried a Zara fragrance before, but I am... Um, looking forward to trying all three of them. Generally I like leather fragrances so I have high hopes that I will enjoy all three of these. And the last two samples that I've got to share with you are both from Mona Diorio. That is what they look like. I got them from Lace and Tours so they're in the little Lace and Tours um, things but it does say on the inside what they actually are. The first one is Dojima, a floral woody musk. It is the main accords are musky, powdery, woody, aromatic, iris, fresh, spicy, floral, savoury, white floral and amber. The notes are rice, sandalwood, orris root, nutmeg, clary sage, musk, 
ambrette, jasmine and labdanum. I really really like this. It's a very, it's a scent that always feels creamy to me if that makes any sense. It's very elegant, very understated. I feel like this is the sort of fragrance so when I said about Lady Blanche from Penaligans being a woman who's got her stuff together but like is quite sort of uh, probably quite kind of spiky and quite ready with a sort of sarcastic remark to like keep people in their place I feel like this is a woman who's like got her stuff together and is very chilled out and never loses her temper and just lets things roll off her like it's a beautiful fragrance but it's just not necessarily one that I feel fits my personality as much as I would love to be the sort of person who never loses their temper and lets things just glide off them and never loses their cool and stays composed. It's not me at all. So I do think it's beautiful, I think it's elegant, I will use up this little sample but I don't feel this is a fragrance that I would commit to a full size of. And the second one is Suede de Suede which I could definitely see me committing to a full size of at some point. This one is a leather fragrance. The notes in it are suede obviously, osmanthus, cedar, cloudberry, pepper, patchouli, musk and strawberry leaf. And the accords are musky, leather, woody, fruity, powdery, floral, patchouli, fresh spicy, aromatic and smoky. There's not a lot left. I'm like rationing this little tester because I think it's such a beautiful fragrance. Again, sort of brand that I can't really get access to at home. I would need to be in London. But I would potentially buy this online at some point because obviously I've had the tester and I know how it smells. But, but I definitely need to finish up some other fragrances before I buy any new ones. So this could be... So my memory card just cut out and I'm not quite sure what I was saying but basically Suede to Suede is one I would maybe buy in the future. However, I thought that was my last. I have one more sample to show you though and it is Asian Provocateur Petal Noir. I haven't worn recently enough to even know what it smells like so going completely off Fragrantica. It is an oriental floral fragrance. The top notes are Magnolia, Hyacinth, Lotus, Violet Leaf, Mandarin Orange and Bergamont. Middle notes are Rose, Lily of the Valley, Ylang Ylang, Neroli, Heliotrope, Orris Root and Osmanthus. And the base notes are Leather, Tobacco Leaf, Oak Moss, Patchouli, Musk, Vetiver, Ginger, Benzoin, Sandalwood, Labdrum, Amber and Cedar. So yeah, going off the notes, they sound quite positive. Tal Noir is my last sample. And that is everything. That is all my perfume and perfume adjacent products like body lotions and things. Well done if you've got to this point. I don't know if I've got to this point in the video. I'm already dreading the editing of the video. But now to talk figures for the sort of beauty rehab inventory part of the video. I've got four perfume adjacent products and all together they are worth $179.69. And then my perfumes that are 37 all in. This is including samples though, and they are worth $3,369.80. In terms of goals to use up, I put perfumes in my project pan last year. They were perfumes I loved, but I didn't like being restricted to having to smell a certain way. I'm very, as you can probably tell from the length of this video, very into my perfume. So I'm not going to set a lot of goals for perfume this year. However, I would like to be rid of all my samples. I would like to finish them all up, stop clinging on to them. If I like them enough to want to repurchase the full size at a later date, I will remember them because I know that I remember things that I really, really love. Um, and I've also now made this video. So if, it, if I really couldn't remember the name of something, I can come back to this or I could do, actually, I could just look in my inventory spreadsheet. So, you know, there is no reason for me to be hanging on to samples so I would like to be rid of all my samples and I would also like to try and use up probably not the shimmer body spray because I feel like that's a bit more specific but I would like to try and use up the shower gel and the two body lotions. The Gucci one's quite new um, but the Mon Guerlain ones are not new so I feel like I want to use them up before they go off. I feel like they're much more likely to go off than the actual perfumes are but I'm not going to set any other usage goals. I'm just going to use what I want to use and see what happens naturally. But yeah, that is the end of the video. So thank you so much for watching. If you have watched to this point, like you're my new best friend and I love you. 
let me know what perfumes you have from my collection that you really like. Let me know if you've got any you would like to recommend to me. I feel like my main perfume sort of wish list at the moment, Chanel Le Lyon. I really want to go smell that in person when things reopen. And also from Penhaligans, they have got, they have added a Mr. Penhaligan to the fragrance family from the portraits collection. So I'm very interested to go in and smell him. Um, also from that line, Terribly Teddy is the next one that I have already smelled that I know that I want to purchase. I just do want to try and finish some other ones before I bring new ones in. But yeah, I'm not setting any direct goals on what should be used up. So we'll just see what happens. We'll see how things move. Thank you so much for watching and I will speak to you in my next video. Bye.